I'm, I'm almost positive what Leibniz was talking about was that God being all perfect and all powerful, etc., uh, certainly wouldn't have chosen to make a less than per perfect world. So just by the, the nature of these theological definitions, you have to conclude that this is the best of all possible worlds. But, I mean, it's, it's way early for people to even contemplate having two chickens in every pot. Medical care, I mean, if you think, plus there's all sorts of folks that are living today which by many are considered to be absolutely the best times in human history to be human, at least in some places. And I think here, by the way, is one of those places, at least here in Anchorage. I don't know about certain other villages that have just been flooded. Uh, uh, you know, the, the next uh, uh, Sunday uh, presentation at the fellowship is uh, about um, future landslides occurring in Alaska. I mean, we've always had landslides um, because of the nature of of our terrain and, and you get enough uh, soil erosion etc um, plus warming I don't know if you've had chances to travel around Alaska but a lot of the, the things that were, were pretty stable for a long time because of the tundra being frozen were thawing out and as a result you're having all kinds of collapses all over uh, ground sinking uh, Fairbanks is suffering a lot more from that and then here, because I don't think we have frozen uh, uh, tundra below. Uh, although I know all our trees are shallow. Yes, because they can only grow roots six feet down. Is that kind of everybody has heard that? Although, I, you know, they've got a row of maple trees along Providence. They lost all their leaves for the year, but they've been growing there now since they built the uh, um, arena, because uh, that was part of the project, they, they put a row of maple trees. And the thing is, maple trees don't grow here. Well, yes they do. No they don't. Yes they do. No they don't. Yes they do. But they're over there. I think they're grafted though. I think they grafted some kind of maple tree on top of a root system. You know how they can do that, right? So the root is probably not maple, but the the tree is. So sorry, they were very warped by that whole whole idea. But I've taken lots of pictures of them because yes, they are maples. Bless you. Thank you for going the demon. <laughs> I love it. Um, in any case, so so if you ever get the chance during the leaves season, whatever that season is, fall or, or spring or summer, have a look at our, our maples. And that's, those are not the only ones. Whoever was the contractor planted a bunch of them over uh, uh, by the uh, lake uh, building as well. Um, but in any case, I'm pretty sure we don't have houses sinking because of uh, frozen tundra melting uh, here in Anchorage. Um, uh, but we can certainly have all kinds of, of uh, landslides, so be careful where you buy your house. There's two new developments. I really shouldn't talk about this, but there's two new developments that are being advertised, uh, both of whom, one is in a canyon, some canyon view estates, uh, and the other one is like cliffside estates <laughs> or something, and, and both of those sound to me like considering the way the weather is going and, and the possible uh, flooding and, and collapse of, of hillsides, neither of those sound like a safe investment to me. Um, okay, well, sorry, uh, back to work here. Um, so this isn't the best of all possible worlds, says, says um, Voltaire, and that's right. By the way, who's Voltaire? Because he's not really Voltaire, that's his nickname. Let's double check his name. Francois Marie Arouet. 
Arara, you know how the French say things. So that's him. Uh, so his nom de plume, which is his pen name, literally the name of his feather, his feather is his pen, right? Um, Voltaire. Whatever that was. So let's just keep that in mind. All right. So what am I, I trying to argue for, for Leibniz? This point is that, as, as uh, Brian Greene argues in multiple places, he's got the fabric of the cosmos. Um, I should show you Brian Greene. His name has an E on it. So it's not just a... Oh, I haven't read that one. So obviously he's still making money off of people that are as gullible as I am. Uh, books and writing, I guess I'll click on that. That's I wanted to show some of until the end of time. Obviously. Nice new cover. I, I might want to buy it just for the cover, you know. Um, but the elegant universe is is a great book. The Fabric of the Cosmos, The Hidden Reality, uh, and I'm not familiar with Icarus at the Edge of Time. That's a new one, too, for me. But basically, um, in these books and also on YouTubes, which he does lots of, uh, even, I think, some TED Talks, he points out that a contemporary physicist today point of view of, of the universe is that we might have what's called a multiverse, so that the apparent universe that we see through our scopes and everything might not be the only one, um, uh, and that they, they kind of all coexist in a multiverse you know, setting. And the reason that they've, they've concocted this idea, all theory and math, is because of the difficulties they're having in constructing the mathematics to show that there's strings that are behind all the quarks, wiggle, the strings that are wiggling, and so on, uh, and other other dimensions, and so on. So the, uh, um, the argument he gives is that there's all these different possible universes that are just different from one another because of slight measurements and how much energy and dark matter there is. And because of the absolute uh, singular nature of our particular universe and the amount of energy and dark matter that can be measured apparently I don't know how they do this but they they give it a really very you know large decimal small decimal you got lots and lots of zeros and then the number right is that a large decimal or a small decimal <laughs> looks large but it's small the, small, the larger it is, the smaller it is, right? Oh, well, okay. In any case, because of that, our particular universe is unique, and as a result, we have things like stars and planets and galaxies and Earths, and Earths have atmospheres, and atmospheres have beer. <laughs> Actually, that's another philosopher that does that. Um, <laughs> Of all the things that are really important, we have atmospheres, we have water on the planet, we have a moon. If it wasn't for our moon, <coughs> asteroids and other meteorites and things would have totally blasted the heck out of this small rock in space. Um, but thanks to our moon, it catches all the, the stuff and, and it all hits the moon instead of here. Thank you, moon, right? Uh, and then all this other stuff. Uh, is so unique because of our universe. And that's what makes this the best of all possible universes. Because this, that's what makes this universe the kind of universe that can support life. Does that mean everybody's a king or a princess? I have a question for you. This is not the quiz question, although you can answer this if you research it. Why does Disney only have princesses? In fact, they're selling Princess Sue. Have you seen this? <laughs> the other day, I was in 
the cars supermarket. And guess what? I found you can get any of the princesses. You can get uh, Ariel, uh, etc. By the way, it doesn't say what kind of soup it is. That's really scary. It's it's princess. Even in German, Prinzessin Suppe. Holy shoot. Look at that. Elsa soup. It's frozen. This soup is frozen. It says on the label. What kind of soup is it? It's frozen. That's just scary. But it occurred to me, hey, who are the princes in Disney movies? They're all they're all horrible people, right? Not a single one of them is, I, I mean. Okay, so that's that's a squirrel. Sorry about that. But I'm not sure what that means about our universe, but at least it's a, an odd thing to me about what people are feeding their children. And none of you are familiar with Princess Soup? I happen to know and found the soup to be perfectly fine that I ate a can of soup that was uh, what's his name Jason Kelsey soup I'm not kidding Well, this is chunky. <laughs> Princess soup, not chunky. Uh, but but this, and, and see, that's his beard and his signature and the number sixty-two. Guess what that number is? That's correct. He's an eagle, and by the way, he's Travis Kelsey's brother. Oh, he's the less fortunate. Or more fortunate brother? Or princess? Yeah, you want to trip before you want to trip before the uh, podcast with Travis. He was famous before Travis. I'm speaking strictly of Taylor Swift. He's already rich. Yeah, he's got it. And Taylor Swift, as we all know, is a childless cat lady. <laughs> Really? Not her, I'm sure. Um, I'm just checking my camera to make sure we're getting all of this because it's really good stuff. Okay, so that's all right. So that's actually my argument with regard to Leibniz. And so uh, I'm basically just saying that uh, Voltaire is, is making fun of, of really a, a much more serious argument. No. Uh, clearly Leibniz is not saying that this is the best of all possible worlds for everybody. You know, you know, obviously there's all kinds of competition and it's, you know, I'm certainly a fan of Hobbes, dog eat dog world, you know, that's, you know, pretty, pretty clear. He did do his best to try to bring about peace in his day uh, and died with nobody at his grave except his butler. Okay, so Barclay is uh, the focus, really, today. Uh, this is uh, the three dialogues uh, between Hylas and Polonus. Hylas, Hylas, however you want to pronounce it, is Latin for matter. And Polonus is Latin for love of mind. Um, if you go back to some of the Greeks, remember the concept of nous, that the mind uh, was the nature of the universe. Um, so actually there's almost nothing new under the sun, except that different philosophies become more in vogue and they, they increase the amount of details and connections and so on. Uh, but in this particular argument, um, it's a dialogue 
between uh, Helis and Philonis, and uh, Matter is, is uh, uh, going to argue for John Locke's point of view, and Philonis is going to argue for Barclay's point of view. And the basic argument is that uh, if uh, Locke is right in saying that all of the objects in the world, the reality that's out there, consists of hard physical objects that are made of atoms that are basically little building blocks that can't be changed, etc., but are rearranged in some sort of order to create all the different things that we have. But our minds, on the other hand, are spiritual in the sense that they're, they're um, not made up of matter. Well, now, you, you try to read some of Locke's uh, stuff, and it seems like he's arguing that our minds are made up of matter, uh, little bu building blocks that are being knocked around just like Hobbes. Remember, Hobbes clearly is a materialist in that sense, although we don't go back and blame him for this, even though there's clearly a chain of causality there. But with, uh, with Locke, that's the one that Barclay is mostly arguing with because, remember, he's concerned that people are going to become atheists and have no reason to believe in God 